Hello everyone, I'm Elodie from France. I'm a clinical biologist, a PharmD, PhD in Lille University Hospital. My case topic is about a novel transfer invariant that impairs both the diagnosis of alcohol abuse and congenital disorder of glycosylation. We report the case of the 39-year-old male of Tamil ethnicity, a CDT value over 20% using capillary electrophoresis was measured in the context of a driving license regranting. An exchange between the biologist and the gastroenterologist revealed the absence of symptoms and a normal hepatic function. So, a control of CDT using an alternative immunonephrometric method was decided. Surprisingly, the value was this time normal, under 2% with this method in our laboratory, and it was controlled twice. Such discrepancy between the two methods might be seen in some congenital disorder of glycosylation. We explored this possibility with another method, isoelectric focusing. This is the reference method for the diagnosis of congenital disorder of glycosylation. Let me explain how it works. It allows to separate the different glycoforms of transferring according to their charges. These charges are provided by the sialic acid on the glycan of the transferring. Most of the population's transferring is transferring C with a majority of four cyanotransferin. In the case of a CDG type 1, one or two full glycan chains are missing, resulting in the elevation of two cyano and zero cyanotransferin. In the case of a CDG type 2, the glycan chain might be incomplete, resulting in the elevation of hypocyanylated forms of transferring. Surprisingly, in our case, the patient profile was different for a CDG type 1 profile. As you can see, no zero cyanotransferin is seen. In the meantime, we received samples for other members of this family, the brother and the cousin, for the same purpose. Here again, same profile. Uh, the existence of a transferring variant was then suspected. Let me explain. Not only the sialic acid are providing the charge of the transferring, but also the protein backbone. If a neutral amino acid of the reference transferring is modified into a positively charged amino acid, there will be a shift on the gel, right? This is what happened for 5% of the po population that is heterozygous for B transferring or D transferring. As you can see, the two versions of transferring are seen in the gel. To prove the existence of a transferring variant, we need neuraminidase. Neuraminidase, or also known as sialidase, is a an enzyme that removes silic acid moieties on the end glycan. Thus, the migration profile on the, of the transferrin only depends on the charge of the amino acid of the protein backbone. In the case of the CDG type 1, the removal of silic acid by neuraminidase gives only one version of transferrin, one band. In the case of transferrin variant, the two versions of the transferrin are seen after neuraminidase treatment, with an equivalent amount for each. In our case, one unique band could be seen, meaning that or the transferrin variant has similar charge as the reference transferrin C, or we are in front of a new, particular, undescribed and silent CDG. At that point, we needed genetic to solve the problem.
uh, whole genome sequencing, including transferring gene and gene involved in glycosylation, was performed. A heterozygous missense variant was found. An asparagine was modified into a serine residue, but not any asparagine. Precisely one of the two asparagine that are constitute a glycosylation site of the transferrin. No asparagine, no branching. So half of the patient transferring only harbors one unique glycans and thus missing two silic acid. Moreover, the antibody of the immunonephrogenetic method is unable to recognize this site and can't fix. Overall, the elevation of the two cyanotransferrin seen here is not due to alcohol consumption. This novel variant explains the result observed in capillary electrophoresis, nephrometry, and isoelectric focusing with and without neuraminidase. A genetic report was sent to the physician to contraindicate the use of capillary electrophoresis for CDT measurement of the whole family. The driver license was given back. However, immunonephrometric method is not accurate it only reflects 75% of the real CDT value because one out of four glycan is missing. So we recommend in the case of unusually elevated CDT over 15% to measure direct markers of alcohol metabolism such as ethylglucuronide and phosphatidylethanol. Thank you. Glycobiology is raising simplicity out of this complexity.